If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh, message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed, and Charles shall lead them. To buy our merch. Oh, yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. There we go. All right, guys. Metal Cat is in the house. The first song is from a band... By the name of Wayfarer, I think is how you pronounce the band. Wayfarer. Like oh, hey. Uh, Amr said, been watching you for five years now. This is the first time I catch you live. Good to see you, buddy. All right, here we go. Wayfarer, the Iron Horse. The Iron Horse, dear listener. Let's do it. <laughs> Sorry, that was me by accident. I thumbed up. <laughs> Ooh, oh, a live show. Here we go. Here we go.
Richard uh, says Richard says that saved it. He loved the vocal style. Discover it's new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org. I, I didn't I didn't necessarily think the song needed to be saved. I thought they did a badass job at it. Are you hearing that uh, buzz? Um, well, we can get that on the commercial, right? Yeah. These guys have a new album out just a month or two ago. Also really good. One of my favorite albums of the year. First of all, I thought that this band was going to be a, like, a, uh, like a 80s metal hair band. Like, I could have sworn that the name Wayfarer was, like, an old school name, like, an old school band. So when the guy, like, starts off immediately with death vocals, I was like, what the fuck? Shout out to M- Matthew Mori. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so I'm like, this, I didn't this expect is not. That. That either. I, I thought it was going to be an 80s hair metal band. Is there a band called, like, that sounds like the band Wayfarer, like the, the name, the title Wayfarer? Because I was certain that it was going to be like a <coughs> 80s metal type of thing, but I was pleasantly surprised. I love the guitar work in this. Everybody knows that, like, I have a guitar and I play it sometimes. Um, Do you think it had some doom elements to it? Yeah, it did. It de- it definitely did. Yeah, as far as like especially the especially toward the ending. Yeah, the tempo. Mm-hmm. Um, metal wise, like I, I I loved the guitar, man. That guitar work was insane. The lyrics were extremely provocative, considering some of the things that I've been looking at and some of, some elements of the community have been looking at. So we can talk about that for sure. But like, yeah, man. Sonically, I was kind of taken off. It. I'm not gonna lie. It took me about 45 seconds, which is significant for like a five and a half, six minute song or whatever. It took me like 30, 45 seconds to like adjust. And then once I did, once once I heard the instrumentation and like, especially toward the end where it had that kind of like the staccato, like, but they were still doing like the weird uh, lick. It was great. The whole thing was great. Shout out to Revo. Revo in the house. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. Um, yeah, I, I loved what they did with the music, man. Like, I, uh, the, the vocal style, like I said, like it really popped for me because I wasn't expecting it. Um, but I thought it went well with the, with the, um, with the song. It, it, it was like neither here nor there for me, but obviously the musicianship on this song was crazy. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you saying? Um, you, I'm a clean vocal type of person. Obviously we all know that. Um, so that, Vocal style is not really, that's not really my jam, but I, I felt that it fit with the song. And if this is like your style, it seems like it, it all works together. Lyrically, um, are we, <coughs> we're talking about, I mean, I know we got into some violence and it seemed like, are we, are we talking about, he said settlement, right? Is, yeah. Are we talking about like running people off their property and is that what he meant? Yeah. Um, it, it, it just seems to me about like war, warfare, warfare technology, yeah. um, and one group of people just having overwhelming power over another group of people. Um, okay. I initially interpreted the, the horse title to be talking about literal horses. But then when I saw the lyrics, I'm like, I, it doesn't look like that to me. It sounds like we're talking about technology. Like oh, the iron okay. horse, like a train and things like that. And the reason I say that is because it says, um, ironclad stallions, pour it on steel legs, a run. steam powered demon uh-huh. from, from a bastard God to, from bastard God to steam powered demon, the apostles fall in the cavalcade. So it's kind of, it kind of sounds like, like post industrial revolution. Yeah. A new Lord lays claim to the land. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, like post industrial revolution, sort of like, uh, Oh, wow. Okay, so when it says apoc- the apostles follow in the, how do you say? Cavalcade. Reavers and raiders, hunters and harbingers. harbingers. It, a path is struck. Extinction begins. Right. Is he talking about, okay, the train came through and it opened up a path for, like, everything to progress further. And with that progression, it was, you know, we're obviously going further, but we're also bringing our evils and all kinds of stuff more further into the land. Oh, okay, so Metal Cat's saying, Western, we Western expansion of the Just USA. Western expansion so. is overall. Okay. Oh, of the USA. Yeah. So the iron born hellion, oh. it's burning eyes, survey the killing fields, permanence and negation, the veins of the public, of the Republic expand. Um, so that's where you would probably get American expansionism because technically we're a Republic. The veins of the Republic. <clears throat> yeah. Expand. The company revels in their champion. 
On his back, the West will be one, an inferno fed of enslavement and starvation. There's always more coal for the flames. That again. Now, who do you think that he is? It looks like the steam engine is what you're talking about there, right? Yeah. And that was the pinnacle of, uh, you know, human sort of ingenuity at the time. You know, that's why when Atlas Shrugged was written, the big accomplishment that she has in the beginning is this railway. Mm. Because, like, that yeah, was kind of... crazy. The railway was, like, the symbol of the Industrial Revolution and yeah. the symbol of, you know, this... And, and like, you know, this takes a... us, too. This takes a negative view of that, which I understand because of the effects. But... The reason that we keep expanding technologically is because it's wired into our DNA and there's nothing, we, we have no other choice. You know, obviously as Christians, we're going to say, you know, God that gave us to the what's called the dominion mandate, mm -hmm. be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Right. Rule. Yeah. A lot of people think that all like Adam and Eve were supposed <laughs> to stay in the garden of Eden, but they were not. They were told to like, they, that's where they started. It was like, here, this is home base. And they were supposed to move out from there and just fill the, fill the world with their children and. But, like, even from an evolutionary perspective, like, um, nature doesn't encourage humanity to remain static either. So, like, I'm watching, I watched this two-hour documentary about Homer Neander, Neanderthalus, I think is the, the technical term for him. Because we've been talking about Neanderthals, and some of that discussion spilled over into middle America. But it's a fascinating thing to think about, because for the first hour, you're just hanging out with the Neanderthals, or you're, like... You're, you're, you're hanging out with them. You see that they, uh, some of them were pescatarian. Like there's this like stereotype in the end of, with fish. They, they, they were seafaring people, oh. which is not the image that you usually get in Neanderthals. Usually no. the image of Neanderthals are just big, dumb oaks yeah. with a, you know, a club and, you know, all the rest of it. But like, you know, they had, you know, pr primitive, but art nonetheless, um, you know, they had staining that could last 50,000 mm -hmm. plus years. Yeah. So that, that shows technology. So you're hanging out for an hour with these Neanderthals. Um, and then uh, it says they look up and then here come the here come the Homo sapiens. And so then after that, the, they did not survive. And so there's a, there's a couple theories. Like one theory is like, well, the, the, the Homo sapiens were outnumbering the Neanderthals by like 15 to 1 at that point. Um, the, the homo sapiens had already genetically been able to acclimate to the harshness of African weather. And, um, they epigenetically were able to also adapt very quick, quickly to the European issues. Whereas on the other side, the Neanderthals were not able to do that. So the, these guys had dominant genes. And so the breeding was such that you could just breed them out of extinction because there's only 10,000 of them and there's 15 so, to one, there's yeah. a 15 to one ratio. Um, so that was an interesting to think about. Another thing to think about was <clears throat> it appears that the Neanderthals practiced cannibalism and incest to a degree, which obviously is not very good for your genetic makeup. And then obviously the last one was, was war. And the fascinating part about that was the fact that, as I've been saying, humans were able to organize beyond numbers of 50. Neanderthals don't seem to be able to get past the number 30. How, how do we know that? <laughs> um, because of the settlements that they had. They never saw anything more than 30 separate. Oh. Whereas with Homo sapien settlements, you had you had hundreds and hundreds of people at some times because you they were able to create villages. And mm. even, those, even though those systems were primitive, they were miles ahead of the of the of the Neanderthals. And so Do they have theories whether it was like disease or like what was the reason why they couldn't the Neanderthals? Yeah, do they know? I, th like, I, I, I think it's basically, the understanding is that, that they're a separate species than, than human. Uh -huh. When I look at it, I'm like, I don't know, man. It sounds like a, just a race of humans to yeah. me with a slightly different DNA or whatever, but yeah. it just looks like human to me. But um, they, they didn't have the capability mentally to get there, given the time period that they had. The other thing, too, is that there was only 10,000 of them spread out through Europe at a given time. And they were not millions but tens of thousands of homo right. sapiens. So then, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so there was a numbers game. Um, so it was just fascinating. Yeah, you would think that, the, like, the, they would, if they're mixing like that, that you would think that that would add to their numbers and that they could get a group bigger than 30, even if it was a mixed group bigger right. than 30. 30 is a pretty small group. Well, I mean, being a leader of people, like, you know, I've, I've had, you know, upwards of six, 700 people reporting me. I've had 20 people reporting me. Like, it's vastly different. Like, even 
once you get out of the number three in an organization, it becomes extremely complicated, much less 30, much less 50, much less <laughs> extremely difficult to navigate, especially in a, in a dynamic environment where there was no previous group of people to look at. See what I'm saying? So the homo sapiens, for whatever reason, had uh, bigger uh, brains and bigger capacities to organize at higher levels. Um, and as such, they were completely dominant in war. But the, the, the facts are, nature won't allow you to be static either as a homo sapien. Because you, we became, yeah. think about this, we became the apex predator on the planet. But we are by no means the physically strongest, most imposing predator on the planet by any stretch of the imagination. Right. It was, yeah. So initially, it wasn't even our ability to craft weapons that made it so that our ancestors could survive. It was the ability to organize. Because if you're going to take down a wildebeest that's or so a true. lion, Dude, that's so true. you can well, have all the greatest didn't... spears in the world. Yeah. But you're going to have to have a crew of people take that dude down. And deal with the pride and all the other shit that they have to yeah. deal with in, in those circumstances. So the ability to organize really was the make or break. And then then obviously the technology became, you know, became so overwhelming. But it, it's just very, very fascinating in this song because, you know, we're not talking about the Stone Age now. We're talking about our current age. And, like, it is an interesting thing to me to think through the ramifications of, like, okay you had a whole group of people that are gone. Yeah. So these Neanderthals, they were obviously conscious. They could talk. They, Some people are now theorizing they had religion, blah, 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 blah. And now they're all gone and we're left. And it's like, if I was not a Christian and I subscribe to that worldview, it's like you have to continuously evolve in technology because eventually – there's going to come another predator somehow mm -hmm. that could probably is the next level above you. Yeah. And so you would be Neanderthalus to them. Yeah. And so in the back of your, <laughs> and then on top of that, we also know that we're completely yeah. destroying this planet. Yeah. Um, mostly due to our technological advances, which mm -hmm. is ironic. And so what's going on now? Elon's saying, well, we got to figure out how to populate Mars. So it's like, it, it's like this, this is going on in everybody's psychology. This, this brute sort of survivalist instinct and the things that nature does in response to the threat to the annihilation of a species would would look, you know, like a historical tragedy if it was happening in this time. But because it's happened so long ago, it's just kind of like a curiosity. But, oh, yeah. But yeah. people, but there's a lot of people who obsess about that shit, mm -hmm. and, it's, and and it's it's one of the reasons why American, why our country is so crazy about having the best technology and, and losing billions of dollars in a DOD budget. It's because we're saying we're not the strongest group of people on the face of the earth. We're not the most numerous people on the face of the earth. We're currently at the top of the hill, and the only way we'll remain there is by overwhelming technological dominance. And so you have all these black. Uh, budgets within the DOD for that reason. So like black the, budgets, that's what they call it. Yeah. Is it, they're like ones that we don't talk about. Is that what you mean? Yeah. You don't know. They just go into a black hole. Oh, wait, that is that part of the, like go. when they're like a billion X amount of billion of yeah. dollars was lost. It was stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they're routinely losing money. They're not losing money, but they're okay. sick. But w here's what I would guess. What they're signaling to their enemies is that We've already declared that we're spending five hundred billion dollars a year on war, <laughs> and we're also saying but X we've amount got of billion. we've got sixty billion unaccounted for that nobody knows about. That's for oh, our enemies. That's not yeah. for us. Okay, all right. That's not for us. Off, but yeah, it's it's for saying. our enemies to go. Oh my God! What, what are the Americans are working on? On top of on? all like the UAP shit. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, how do you fit the Neanderthals though into like Genesis, like? Do you believe Adam and Eve were Neanderthals? Um, or where in the timeline are you putting that? Look, the Denisovans, those those were the people in, in uh, Russia. So the Denisovans were not Neanderthalists, but they were also not Homo sapien. So the Denisovans... And this is like all different bone structures that we're finding that's telling yeah, us that they're all different. Yeah, the sites in what we call Russia. So you got the Denisovans there, and then you've got the Neanderthals in Europe, and then you've got Homo sapiens in Africa. To me... 
at this point, if it's bipedal, it can walk and talk and do art and religion, it's a human. I don't mm-hmm. care about yeah. that. And then the other yeah. aspects of it are genetic. But that's to me, I don't know the specific taxonomy as to why, what chromosomally separates Neanderthalus from Homo sapien from Denisovans. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not that far yet. I'm mm-hmm. saying right now for me, there's no problem scripturally because to me, these are just human beings. You know what I'm saying? Like, these cat and, and well, oddly guess... enough, there's actually debate within the community about even the term species and how you differentiate them taxonomically in the first place because they seem the lines seem to be arbitrary when you start looking at the official literature. It's really weird. I think like the the question mark it, is like, well, it, Neanderthals were saying we're not as intelligent as we are, and if Neanderthals predated us, then that would mean that they were closer to Adam and Eve, but. Obviously, Adam and Eve walked with God, so they would have been probably more intelligent than us. I mean, they're having face-to-face conversations, face-to-face, you know? No, I mean, I think they were physically having face-to-face conversations with God. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, for me, yeah. like, there's a couple candidates. There's Nephilim as candidates. There's um, the people in the conquest narratives, uh, you know. So, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, but again, Neanderthals were in Europe, Okay, the Old Testament is dealing with a very specific plot of land in the ancient Near East, right? It's an ancient Near Eastern religion. Mm -hmm. So if Neanderthals, the the closest they got to Israel was the Levant, which is pretty close to Israel, geographically speaking. But but my point is that the vast majority of Neanderthals were located, could have been located in Europe, right? And so... Why do ancient Near Eastern Israelites care about what's a, a, a group of people in Europe? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh. So, so I'm not sure. Okay. I, I really don't okay. know. Yeah, because you're saying, oh, uh, okay. I think I, I think I, I'm following you. Yeah, really good stuff. Uh, what'd you give it? Uh, it's not my vocal style. Not, not like my cup of tea. Um, more on the like the darkery side, I guess you could say. So a seven point two for me. I still think so, that they did a good job. This was a nine dot four. It's really, really thought provoking lyrics for me on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the things that I really, really appreciated about this one. But we are coming back. Ah, here's my buddy. Neanderthals were in West Asia as well as Eurasians have Neanderthal admixture. In fact, surprisingly, Europeans didn't even have the most Neanderthal mixture. Yeah, I thought it was the uh, Orientals, right? I didn't want to say Chinese, but when I was looking at my documentary, <laughs> we taught all the people in the NFL. It's only sub-Saharan Africans that have like a point zero 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 something like that. Really interesting stuff. Okay, we're coming back on the other side of the break. We shall return. We'll right yes, back. I said Oriental, so I didn't get canceled there, uh, <laughs> Johannes. All right, guys, we shall we shall return. We shall return. 